I was gonna wear a trench coat today so I could look fly for you guys for this video. But I was like, nah, I'll just throw on this hoodie. Hey, it's me, Abby P. What up, my people? Turns out I just wanted to be comfy. I realized this is the same hoodie I wore in my last Q&A video. I guess this is the Q&A hoodie. All right, so teaching Q&A, let's get it. Okay, first question, how did you decide to become a teacher in Korea? At the time, six or seven years ago, I was very lost in life. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And teaching in either Japan or Korea was something that I thought about uh, when I heard about the JET and EPIC program. So at that point, I was pretty much just like, F it, I'm not doing anything career-wise right now anyways, so I just went for it. And at the time, I was more into studying Korean and I guess more interested in Korea and Korean culture, so that's why I decided on the EPIC program. So I did all of the research and preparation required, had a lot of anxiety through it, but I made it through and the rest is pretty much history. Uh, advice for teaching. I can only speak on teaching English in Korea specifically since that's what I have experience with. But I think with anything in life, really, that you're trying to pursue, you should take time to do as much research as you can. Uh, be curious and ask a lot of questions like you're doing now, which is good. And then put in the necessary preparations and work to achieve it basically like what I did to get here. Um, specifically for teaching, my biggest advice is to be open and fluid. And maybe some of you might already know, but I'm a huge Bruce Lee nerd. And so I'll be quoting my favorite quote of his, which is, be water, my friend. That means you need to be able to adjust to many things in the profession, time and schedules that might frequently change, lesson plans that might also need to be changed other teachers you work with and how you communicate with others and most especially you need to be able to adjust to your students i've been teaching in elementary schools grade three through six here in korea elementary schools are from kindergarten to sixth grade and the kids officially start their english classes in the third grade i have taught in very small schools and i do currently teach at a small school where there's only one class per grade and like five students in that one class. And then I have my main schools, which are the bigger schools. And at my biggest school that I've taught at, there was like eight classes in one grade and almost 30 students in each class. So each class is different. And as a teacher, it'll be your job to adjust and familiarize yourself with each class. Some classes are super energetic, super loud, and they will have the best reactions to anything you do or say while other classes might have super shy quiet kids um, aka me when i was a student and still now maybe <laughs> so i have kids in my classes who don't say anything at all like they don't want to speak at all especially in english because it's a foreign language to them so those classes won't give you any reactions and it can be very difficult sometimes. Some classes might have more students with a higher English level, so you'll have to prep more activities for them since you'll go through things a lot quicker, whereas other classes might have more lower level students and you'll have to go slower with those classes. It's all about being flexible, like water, and adjusting to the needs of each class and each specific student. Be empathetic to your kids and learn how to flow with each one. A good teacher will be attentive of each student's abilities and how they can work with that student to reach their potential. Also, another big piece of advice is to treat each lesson each day as its own thing. Be able to move on to the next day and the next lessons. I say this because you're gonna have those days where you don't feel like your students are doing a good job or you don't feel like you're doing a good job as a teacher. You need to be able to go to bed that night and wake up the next day fresh for the next lessons and for your students. Some days can be really hard, both physically exhausting and mentally exhausting. And everything I'm speaking of in this video is from experience, but a similar thing I can think of um, is if you play sports, 
like for instance here in Korea I play volleyball and after each play no matter the mistakes you made or no matter the mistakes your teammates made you got to just move on and get your headspace into the next play otherwise if you keep mentally eating yourself up over a mistake that you made it's just gonna affect your current performance that's happening right now in the present so in volleyball when we're playing and like we lose a point or something to the other team we're always gonna hear tamko 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 which is basically like on to the next just on to the next and then later you can reflect on the mistakes that you did make and how you can learn from them and improve like just the word mistakes it sounds so bad but everything is merely a learning experience to get better and better uh, in regards to specifically teaching English in Korea, um, a pro is that the incentives are pretty good. Your housing is paid for by your school, so you don't ever really have to worry too much financially. And this is mainly for if you're teaching at a public school, because those are government run. Um, private academies are hagwons. Those are a different story because those are businesses. So you'll have to research beforehand on which type of school you want to teach at and what programs to go through. Again, I came here through the EPIC program. Uh, a con is that it's a really big hassle to actually get here because you have to prepare so many things uh, legally like with documents and stuff and get your teaching certificate and just so many things to prepare beforehand since you are moving to a completely new country and then once you're in the country you'll have to adapt to a new culture and a new environment but for me I'd say that it was all worth it despite all of the difficulties and struggles uh, tips when you have an unexpected class to teach um, this goes back to my advice of being flexible and able to adjust you need to expect the unexpected and i've said this in a previous video you have to always remember that you're going to be teaching in a different country with a different culture that has different ways of doing things and I'm basically speaking to myself in this video too because these are all things that I've especially struggled with all of my life. Being able to cope with changes and the unexpected. First of all, I hate winging lessons. I prepare very well for each of my lessons. Like that's, that's the kind of teacher, the kind of person that I am, is I prepare very, very well. So in the case of unexpected lessons that do come up, you want to have backup activities already prepared for those situations. And that's just a big thing as a teacher, is to have backup things. To do this, you can keep some files or links to videos or things like that in a drive, in an online drive, so you can easily access it. And this is what I do. Or you can always have some filler activities that you already know and you can do with your students anytime. Um, for instance, like when I think back to when I was a student in school, especially like in elementary, middle school, remember when teachers would have us play games like Heads Up, Seven Up, or they would just put on some like educational video or movie or something, or even have us do a bunch of worksheets, just doing worksheets. Those are a great way to fill up time and just have students review and practice things. So it's good to just have worksheets handy, just in case. And especially for my younger kids, I have a lot of backup songs ready to go anytime we need more activities or there are those unexpected classes. I like ones where they can move around and use their bodies, so like head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, uh, songs like that. As long as what you're doing has educational value for the kids, then it should be fine. And we're back. Just as a note to address continuity errors, um, the two STEM charts that you saw earlier, they're gone now because I was using them for my classes. Now that's out of the way. Most embarrassing experience as a teacher. Uh, probably having to win something during a lesson. As I said, I'm not very good at that. Uh, I wish I was. I wish I was cool enough. Um, but I'm not, unfortunately. <clears throat> Even though I pretend I am. Um, I don't know, I can't recall too many embarrassing moments off the top of my head Probably because I suppressed a lot of those <laughs> embarrassing moments and locked them away somewhere in the abyss of my mind Yes, you will have embarrassing moments, but if it makes you feel any better 
the only one that's gonna remember those embarrassing moments later down the road is you. And you'll eventually forget them anyways, like I did, so it's fine. And I'm sorry, I don't really have any embarrassing stories to, to share um, off the top of my head right now. Uh, if I do, then maybe I'll make a video on that later. Favorite thing about teaching? Obviously, the vacations, come on. You get summer and winter vacations, holidays off, that's what I'm talking about. I'm just, I'm just joking, like half joking, you know. I'm a, since I'm a good teacher, I'm gonna say my favorite thing is that this job just feels fulfilling for me. I like knowing that I'm playing this important role for these little babies in their um, growth and in their learning. You're like a parent basically, you're their parent. And as many parents um, who might be watching this video, as you know, it's a very, very exhausting job, but I mean, it's also very fulfilling and very rewarding, right? Teaching is not something that you do for the money. It's definitely not something you do for money, but because you want to see these kids do their best and succeed uh, and I don't know I just feel very proud when I see my kids in class doing their best and enjoying the lessons you know and that's that's my favorite thing I'm very simple in that in that way I guess okay so that's uh, all the questions that I'm gonna answer today in regards to teaching English here in Korea. Um, but some other advice that I just remembered, and this is a, a very good one that I wish I knew and enforced in my first year of teaching because I didn't and it was uh, a mistake. <laughs> but you need to have rules. You need to have a system. You need to have expectations set right off the bat when you start your first day of classes with your students so that they know what to expect. Um, and they know what you will allow and what you may have to discipline them for for if they don't do what is expected of them. And you need to follow through with that system and with those rules. I talk about being flexible and being like water, like I said, going with the flow of each class, right? Also, it's about finding that balance. So certain classes, um, you, I mean, you will have like your set rules and system for all of the classes, it's like it's your standard, but also, you know, you do have to find that balance within each class. Um, as I said, for those classes that are more lower level, you probably shouldn't be as like tough on those kids who are lower level, you know. You want to probably be more uh, inviting, a little friendlier with those kids so that they're more willing to, you know, open up, speak in, in class. Whereas with the higher level students, the way you run those classes is going to change too. But at the core, at the foundation of each of those classes is your basic set of rules and your system that you follow. By system, I mean how you run your class, your specific like teaching style, your rewards or punishment system, discipline system if you have that. I don't like to call it punishment really. Um, I'll call it discipline, so your discipline system, and you always have to follow through with those. Uh, also, please note that because of the pandemic situation going on, if you do come here to Korea, the system is going to be different because now we do online classes, and then the in-person classes at the actual school, they run it differently now too, the system is a little different. Be aware of that if you do come here. To teach English in Korea during this strange time. Um, what else? I can't, I can't think of anything else right now. If you have any more questions, please just comment it down below and I'll answer it directly. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. It will really help me out. I'm gonna leave you guys with this week's comment shout outs. And uh, that's it. See you guys in the next one. Happy teaching. Good luck. Bye.